As people around the world gathered last week to ring in the new year, it was a heartbreaking moment for families of the remaining Israeli hostages whose loved ones have been forced to begin a new year in Hamas captivity. Over the past month, I was devastated to learn that two of the hostages that I've spoken about have since died. Israeli-American Judy Weinstein and her husband, God, both died from injuries they sustained on October 7th. Their bodies are still being held in Gaza. God was a retired chief, excuse me, God was a retired chef, jazz musician, and gifted flautist. A father of four and a grandfather of seven, he was a man full of humor who knew how to make other people laugh. God's wife, Judy, was a person of peace. A New York native, she loved making puppets and teaching English to children with special needs. She was a wellness expert who used me meditation and mindfulness techniques to help those traumatized by years of rocket fire. She was also a pacifist who advocated for Palestinian rights. In one of the poems that she wrote and shared on social media, Judy described herself as a lone pilgrim enveloped by ancestors listening to a flute's homage beckoning her on. The deaths of Judy and God are a sad conclusion to a long and horrifying saga. It's also a disturbing reminder of the perils faced by other hostages. I recently returned from a congressional delegation trip to Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan. And I can tell you that the suffering and the grief that the Jewish people and innocent Palestinian people have faced daily is truly devastating. The collective anguish, fear, and horror is palpable. The path to peace with all hostages being returned and the rebuilding of a Palestinian state without Hamas, with the support and investment of the Arab and Muslim world, is now more urgent than ever. When meeting the families of the hostages, the urgency and anguish in their eyes was devastating. To know that your loved one could be suffering unspeakable horrors, they may be on the edge of death and feel powerless to stop it, is a pain that no family member should ever be forced to bear. They have spent every living day and moment since October 7 fighting to get their loved ones home. This nightmare must end now. One of the families I met with told me about their loved one, Daron. A 30-year-old veterinarian nurse, she hid under her bed in her apartment as Hamas terrorists rampaged her kibbutz. The last her family heard from her was a voice message in which they said, they've arrived, they have me. Jerome has a stomach condition and her family worries her health will deteriorate without daily medication. They worry about rape and sexual violence and sexual torture. They worry she will not survive the horrors of her captivity. I also met again with the families of Itai Hen and Omer Nutra, two New Yorkers who are being held hostage by Hamas. Itai is a 19-year-old boy who was born in New York City and is now serving with the IDF. He was supposed to return home to his family shortly after October 7th to celebrate his brother's bar mitzvah. Omer Nutra is also a New Yorker, grandson of Holocaust survivors, avid athlete, loves the New York Knicks. He deferred his exceptions to Binghamton University to spend a gap year in Israel before he joined the IDF. On the day of the attack, he was working as a tank commander defending the Gaza border. He was last seen on a video being forcibly removed at the hands of Hamas terrorists. 
In addition to these two New Yorkers, I also met with the family of another American hostage, Hirsch Goldberg Poland. He had his lower arm blown off by a hand grenade. His mother says his injuries could easily have resulted in him bleeding to death and wonders, is he alive? Is he suffering? Does he ever have a chance of coming home? These are just a few of the roughly 130 people still being held hostage by Hamas, including eight Americans. And with every day that goes by, the danger to them only grows. I hope that in this new year, we can secure their safe return, their release, and coming home to their families before it is too late.